Astrotometry Log. It is September the 9th, 2011. It's approximately 2017 UTC at the time of this recording. This is a log of this seismic event that USGS has just recorded in Vancouver Island in Canada. Unfortunately, this event is only two kilometers deep and considering the proximity to Vancouver, very concerned about the effects. This is the preliminary magnitude 6.7 may be the Richter scale magnitude. And so this may be adjusted up or down depending on the moment magnitude influence. And this event was coincident with this very, very significant electromagnetic disturbance. And this is not considered to be the cause of this event in astrotometry. This is a symptom of the cause. And so this arrived ahead of the geomagnetic activity that we're seeing from an Earth-directed coronal mass ejection that is coming from a flare event on the Sun that was associated uh, with this spike right here. So there was an Earth-directed flare and coronal mass ejection that is now arriving. The flare energy, this energy, arrived back on the 8th. And since it travels at the speed of light, it arrived almost immediately. It's like seven minutes, I think, between the sun and the earth at the speed of light. But the coronal mass ejection is now arriving. And we're seeing this significant geomagnetic activity. And we're presently in a geomagnetic storm and I don't know how long that will continue. The really interesting thing about this particular event is that this was preceded by a almost nullification, almost complete nullification of the Earth's magnetic field. These are the X, Y, and Z components of the Earth's field right here. And as you can see, the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field sort of whittled down to almost nothing right before this arrived. I'm not sure exactly what this is. This is something I'm logging more for curiosity. This is something I'm sort of studying at this point. I don't have a way to have forecasted this quake. Um, this particular event uh, was associated with a coronal mass ejection that could be considered to be at least in the same hemisphere, not necessarily at the same latitude. But the, like I said, the interesting thing about this uh, from the astrotometry perspective is that it was preceded by this unusual calm period in the Earth's magnetic field. And so it may have been some sort of rebound effect from possibly from the, the passing or the, the um, whipping around of the, uh, the activity. Now we did. We are seeing right now this coincident f feature at approximately the same latitude as Vancouver, and I'm not sure if this has something to do with it or not. But this is Earth directed, and so in astrotometry, this is so difficult to figure out because um, my understanding of electromagnetism is that it is a result. The magnetic force is a result of feedback in the common carrier. And so when you have a disturbance that's facing the Earth, there is uh, a potentiation of the feedback. And so we see these uh, interesting effects from the uh, coincidental pairing of these energetic features as they support uh, the continuum of matter itself. And so these significant seismic events uh, are theorized to actually be the changes in the continuity of particular structures. So if you could imagine a bunch of uh, material bonds uh, on the molecular level suddenly disintegrating uh, coincident with the arrival of one of these events. In other words, I'm talking about the matter-energy conservation relationship that Einstein identified. Um, 
what has to be done to sort out these connections is to understand the relationship between the the sun and the earth with respect to that time continuity and so this is where the concept of hypertime comes in and at that point the sun is then treated as a manifold of time space continuity from which changes in all of our time space movement and continuity sort of emanate and so sorting that out is a very very difficult thing especially when there are multiple active regions and as i mentioned in the uh, when i started this the the reason that i was able to get so many of those earthquakes forecasted is because the sun was so calm and now we have multiple active regions that produce uh, unusual uh, disturbances in the electromagnetic field that have to be sorted out with uh, a, either a careful three-dimensional analysis or uh, some sort of higher dimensional model that is forthcoming. And so the geomagnetic activity uh, is also has also been recorded by USGS on the ground and the most interesting part of this is as I said before is that it was associated with a flare event um, that could have been considered to be at a similar latitude and then we had this really really unusual calm period uh, right before this geomagnetic storm started arriving and so I'm going to be keeping an eye on this I am also watching for uh, a earthquake potentially a north northern hemisphere earthquake coincident with a solar wind stream that will be arriving from this particular coronal disturbance but this is also very very difficult to forecast because of the the multiple active regions and it would appear that there's a a, a sharp contrast a sharp cliff in the time space continuity here which may associate with uh, another northern hemisphere event possibly near um, 20 to 25 degrees north latitude and this would be in the in the next three days possibly um, but considering the disturbances that we're seeing from this coronal mass ejection the multiple uh, CMEs that are earth directed this uh, activity this wind from this uh, this other disturbance in in the transit to the earth it's and it's about seven day transit from an event like this is going to be disturbed and so as I said before unfortunately the the activity of the Sun the dynamic of the Sun is making the forecasting a little bit more difficult and so it's going to be sort of following what's going on from here out because I don't want to say that I know about an event that is coming when in fact I don't so thanks for watching more to come